You've probably clicked on this video because you are having either trouble going ahead and deciding your goals in calisthenics and gymnastics or body weight training in its entirety. You don't know where to start or you're currently lost in your progression when it comes to your programming and you're looking for potentially a new answer. I'm trying to answer all three of those here today in this video. My name is Jeremy, I'm the CEO and founder of Rainmakers Calisthenics. The main goal of this channel is to go ahead and focus on building proper progression for everyone related to gymnastics and actually give out particular information related to true progression and what's normally required from it. I'm coming from a Gymnastics Canada coaching perspective. So I'm taking a lot of things related from the gymnastics world, but also things related to general strength training and also things like the West Side Conjugate Method, which are mainly used for people like powerlifters and particularly applying that to gymnastics and calisthenics. First time here as well, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below. Otherwise, we're going to get right into it. Goals are super important. So at the end of the day, when it comes to goals, it's going to determine what your rate of progression is. It's going to determine what kind of skill tree you decide to go down right from the beginning to, and it's going to determine what kind of athlete you are going to be for the time being. So there are effectively four different steps that you need to go ahead and address. But the main thing is, is before you even get there is deciding where you're going to be starting from. So there's th basically three different branches that you want to look at based on your current progressionary level. How good are your basics, which is number one. We'll go through what basics are here in a moment. Um, how often you're gonna go and train those basics and how often you're gonna have time to actually spend working on the skill that you wish to require or skills. You can work on multiple at the same time. Once you have that determined, you can start looking at what your goal or goals are and why. We'll go into the number of goals that's so actually gonna be able to be effective for training. Um, second is gonna be seeing the anatomy behind those skills. You want to go and tackle multiple skills directly. You want to make sure that if you're not building a program that's going to directly complement both of those goals, that you have the weak links of the kinetic chain made up for along the way. Number three is going to be making sure you can properly test where those skills are at this time. And number four is going to be building a program, which is going to be an entirely different video. So step one, determining your goals and why. At the end of the day, if you don't actually have a overarching goal or goals that you wish to achieve, it's going to be much more difficult for you not to end up spending your goals throughout your time in a training program. So what is normally a best place to start is looking to determine what you really like about the sport. It could be dynamic elements, it could be strength oriented elements, it could be balance oriented elements, it could be a combination of those. At the end of the day, you need to determine what the best things are going to be for you and determining why that is as well breaking it down at a more of a mindset level also. So let's take something like the planche and the front lever. Let's take those two because they're normally very, very common to go together. And there's a reason for that. The reason they go well so together is because one is a pushing movement and one is a pulling movement. But at the end of the day, they do share a lot of the same muscle groups, mainly from the planche going over the front lever and not vice versa. So that's where step two leads into as well. Okay, step two. So when it comes to building the goals that you want to go ahead and achieve at once, it's going to be really important to go ahead and tackle goals that can either complement each other or that are completely antagonistic to each other. So we're using the event, the example of the planche and the front lever. A lot of the time those muscles are pretty antagonistic, meaning they work opposite muscle groups, but there is argument to go ahead and show that the planche and the front lever use very, very similar muscles. They just do it in a different way. So a lot of the time when it comes to building these movement patterns together, it's going to come down to the shoulder flexion aspect of the planche. So bringing your elbows forward. And then when it comes to the front lever, it's going to be the shoulder extension. So bringing the elbows behind you. So those are the two main elements you want to go ahead and focus on is strengthening the aspects of those muscles. So with the shoulder flexion, so going forward, it's mainly going to be the interior of the belt. So the front part of the shoulder. And then when it comes to the front lever, it's going to be that shoulder extension. So mainly lats and a little bit of the long hand of the tricep. So it's going to be the back part of the tricep that you see from the back. When we're focusing on how to better understand the anatomy of different movements and different goals that you wish to achieve, it means you can start strengthening the proper muscles within your strength training program. You can make faster results based on the goals you want, not just doing, for example, basics for the sake of basics, 
doing basics to better understand what muscles we're using and then also adding progressions to make sure that any potential weak points that come up get addressed. So number three, testing where you're at right now. This is super important because there's two ways to tackle this. Either number one, if you're first starting out and you're trying to do plancha front lever, there's, you have absolutely no business testing out if you can do a plancha front lever, you already know. Testing is only when you're multiple years in or you have some training experience underneath your belt or you're just, you're reasonably strong already. Really, it's gonna come down to the first two, frankly. If you have no training experience whatsoever, then there's no reason to even test it, start with the basics. So when it comes to those basics and building up the muscle groups, we wanna go ahead and get us, ourselves to the point that we can go ahead and start testing these skills. So the basics would be like your pull-ups, your chin-ups, your dips, your push-ups, your leg raises and other core movements, mainly focusing on the front part of the core your overhead pressing movements. It's gonna help ensure that you build up your delts as well. So the front part of your shoulders, we talked about the launch. You got your rows and you have your squats and you have your hinges, so like your deadlifts. Those are often neglected in calisthenics and gymnastics, but they do play a critical role as well. From there, we wanna get ourselves to a point again where we can test these skills. We only wanna do it maybe once a week, if not twice a week, depending on how, level, how high of a level of recovery you have. From there, when we test it, we want to make sure to record it. When we record it, we can go ahead and either have that experience ourselves to see what muscle groups are potentially lacking in the movement, what is lacking is going to ultimately determine what the program is going to entail to be able to go and move forward and actually see progression. If your back is arching too much in a plunge, it may not actually be because you have a weak core. It's most likely because you have not strong enough shoulders and you're trying to lean too far forward and your body is compensating for it. So it's the other aspect of it. Taking some time to a little bit learn a little bit about the physics behind these movements. It's very, very important to understand the physics of these kinds of movements to understand where the main loads are going to be at any given time. In a general sense, the best way to go and get stronger at something like a plunge or a front lever is to go ahead for the plunge to increase your hollow body strengthening, so the front part of your core, as well as increasing the lower back strength, so doing things like supermans and reverse hyperextensions. On top of that, go ahead and just generally increasing your shoulder and bicep strength, mainly shoulder strength, or things like bent arm strength and movements, things like your dips, your push-ups, your handstand push-ups. Those things will greatly increase the amount of strength that you can go ahead and output in something like a planche or on the inverse, increasing your general core strength for the front lever and then also increasing your, your lat strength with things like rows and any kind of pull-up variations or any front lever progressions is going to ultimately determine how quickly you progress in these kinds of movements. Once you find out what your weak points are in that movement, you can go ahead and start strengthening that, up, that more by making a program more associated around that. We have designing a training program. So ultimately designing a training program is gonna come down to making sure that you can tackle the movements twice per week. So that can either be on something like a pushing day and then a pulling day, and then you rest, then you have another pushing day and a pulling day, or it could be something like doing a front lever and a launch session in the same workout. That can happen as well. You can do both. The main thing is tackling it twice per week. You can do other things as well, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure that recoverability stays as high as possible. So you have the most amount of rest, so you can have the most amount of intensity during these workouts. Ultimately, both of these movements are very, very intense and very, very high stress on your central nervous system. So when it comes to making sure we can recover properly, we want multiple days of rest to make sure we can perform, perform at our maximum capability. If you're in the situation where you can go and add more things in, generally speaking, it's better just to simply increase the intensity on those given days that you're already training and not go ahead and add more to it. So we'll go ahead and start looking at some things to start programming for it now. And we'll make a general program structure would look like based on where you're at with your current goals, whether that's just getting your basics or working on the launch in front lever itself. We'll look at both of those individually and how to properly structure those, depending on what kind of training frequency you would like and how much time you have to train.
All right, so up above in the corner here, we're gonna have basically two programs. So two programs based on what kind of training frequency you wish to go ahead and do. There's some people that wish to go ahead and train plantar fem linear together because they work similar muscles and gives you more time to rest. Other people have a little bit more opportunities to recover properly, and that's gonna allow him, them to go do more volume over time and spread their sets out. Also, in terms of time constraints, program number two is going to take a little bit longer generally because you're resting much longer in between your sets. Program number one has a little bit more um, volume to it on each day than it would for the other two programs because you're working a little bit of a higher intensity where you have less frequency overall for both. So the way we can go and look at this is starting off with the program one. So we have on both the days, on all of the days for Blanche and Front Lever, we have at least one attempt of the progression that we're working on at that time. So after a brief warm up going through, whether it be a progression of a regression of a skill that you have at this time, or if it's the actual full planche or full front lever itself, or if it's with a certain amount of assistance that you've done during your testing, at that point, you're gonna go and do an attempt at that. An attempt is anything you can go ahead and hold for any higher than one second, all the way up to three seconds. That would be considered an attempt. It's very taxing on the body, very taxing on your mind, being your central nervous system, so it can be very difficult to recover for. So we're only doing one to three at most. And we're only doing one on the second day and we're doing one to three on the first day. We're gonna see anywhere between four to even seven minutes in between these sets because you wanna give it all out attempt during this time. From there, we move on to, for example, the day ones. So this will be for planche and front lever day ones. You have your dynamic straight arm movement or your static straight arm movement. This is gonna be for three to five sets for anywhere between three and five seconds. So we normally try to aim for more of that five second range because we want to build a little bit of volume, but we want to go and do it at a bit of a higher intensity on this day. This is more of our intensity day for both of them, okay? So we're aiming for three to five sets because some days you're going to want to do three because other days you're going to want to go ahead and do five and spread the volume out. When it comes to first starting the program, a great way to get better at the program over time to progressively overload is to add sets. So if you're doing this, for example, in a four week block, then you can go ahead and start this as three sets and then each week or every other week, add another set to it and go all the way up to five sets with the same level of intensity that you have now. And then you have, next you have your heavy bent arm strength movement. So this would be like your handstand push-up. This would be like your dip. This would be something of that nature, like a weighted dip, or you could have a weighted pull-up, for example, or a heavy weighted row for front lever. Let's just use those as an example. So from there, three to five sets, same thing, three to five reps, ideally five reps. And for all of these sets, you're doing three to five times five, et cetera, you're seeing anywhere between you know, two and a half, I would, that's the lowest I would go all the way up to five, six minutes in between your sets. So this is gonna take a long time at the end of the day. You're putting a lot of intensity to it. Uh, and then from there, you have the basics and accessories at your choice, two to four sets, whatever you feel like the weak point is of that movement. You can go and focus on that. Typical body rating, building rep ranges, anywhere up two to four sets, six to 12 reps. So that's for both launch front lever, day one. Both of those on the program one, it's for that. And then we go over to day two, it's a little bit more volume based. So again, we only have that one attempt. And then from there we have either a heavy bent arm or straight arm movement. And then we have a, at that point a heavy bent arm or straight arm movement. So they're both working three to four sets. One of them is a little bit heavier at that six to eight rep range is where we want to land. And then the other one is at a six to 12 rep range. So the way you're going to go ahead and choose which one that is, is which one you feel like you need to get stronger in. Generally speaking, I would start off more with the heavy bent arm strength, because that's normally the most lagging portion for a training. So you have the heavy bent arm strength of three to four sets, six to eight reps. You have heavy overhead press, again, heavy dip, anything of that nature. Then you have a more moderate, maybe static hold or a dynamic straight arm element, just to keep building up that tendon with connective tissue strength. And then from there, basics and accessories, all the same, same thing with front lever. So for program two, we're gonna go ahead and break things down a little bit more by supersetting things. And the way we're gonna go ahead and do this is by putting it at a much higher intensity on those two days, 
So you're having a straight arm pull and then a bent arm push is what you're gonna start with on the day one. And then you're gonna have a straight arm push and a bent arm pull. And all of the, these four movements, you're gonna have them broken up into the two and then they're gonna be super seven. So you're gonna do a straight arm pull immediately into a bent arm push. So you're gonna have a front lever hold or a front lever raise. And then you're gonna go immediately into something like a heavy dip or a handstand push up or a planche push up, something of that nature. And then from there, you're gonna go into a straight arm pushing element. It could be a planche hold, it could be a planche lean, a progression wherever you're at, be a planche press, be a straight arm front raise, it could be any of that nature, right into a bent arm pull, front lever pull up, way to pull up, heavy row, muscle up, etc. And then from there, you have your basics and accessories. And that's it for that day. Super, super straightforward stuff. Three to five sets three to five reps each. You're going, you're resting a long time. You're going very, very intense. And then from there, you flip it over on its head. So you're gonna do the straight arm push, and then you're gonna do the bent arm pull first, and then you're gonna do the straight arm pull and then bent arm push after. You're doing this in a way so that both sides get the priority first, and you're not letting one leg behind the other. If your main goals are planche and front lever, and you keep front lever at the head of your program the whole time, then it's gonna make sense that your front lever is gonna end up progressing faster generally, because you're in a situation where you're always putting that skill first, so you're always the freshest first. So if you switch it up there, you have a better opportunity to evenly spread out your gains over time. And at that point, you're not going to have one skill over bear on another. So where do things like legs and core fit into all this, right? So the way we go ahead and fit in legs and core, quite simply, it all depends on your goals. If you don't wish to go ahead and put legs into your program, that's totally okay. You will possibly have some negative impacts as a result, in the sense that you may have a difficult time having the muscle activation required for certain movements like plunge and front lever. That may be end, up, end up being your limiting factor over time. Generally speaking, it's easier to overcome that by just adding in some simple body weight, even squats into your warm up. It's normally enough to get through that muscle activation. I personally would recommend having a full leg day at least once per week to go and focus on something related to higher intensity, basically just lower weights, higher sets, and having more of like a plyometric aspect to it to ensure you don't put much mass on your legs, but give your legs enough strength so you can still live your day to day life. When it comes to the core strengthening at the end of the day, you really don't need much as you've seen in any of these programs here, because frankly, when you go past any kind of, I don't know, essential work, and from there you start adding in a lot more accessories and whatnot at the time, you can start to lose the scope of what you're doing in the first place, but also you're going to also run into a situation where you're overtraining way too often. So keeping it simple, starting with what generally works and what's gonna go and build the most amount of strength in these movements is gonna be critical for your success. And if you start adding in a bunch of accessories, you may just end up getting burnt out as a result of that. Anyway, folks, that's it for today. So that's going over planche and front lever programming. That's going over the, using those as an example. You can take anything from this here and apply it to essentially any goals because you wanna ultimately build either straight arm pulling or pushing or bent arms pulling or pushing with any of these movements. There's some more niche movements out there. You have things like your iron crosses, for example, that can be a little bit more intricate when it comes to pulling your push. That's gonna be a totally separate video for another time. But either way, you can apply the same things when it comes to your basics as well. You can basically just strip away any kind of straight arm elements if you wanna mainly focus on bent arm. And then from there, you can have a heavier bent term and then a moderate bent term right after all that still applies here this gives you some kind of programming structure to be able to go and see the big things to take away are making sure you don't have too many exercises in your program keeping it simple and not adding in too many accessories if you don't need to and then going ahead and making sure that you have an equal amount of pulling and pushing if that's your goal and then lastly ensuring keeping the intensity high because that way you will actually go ahead and build the strength that you want and not potentially just muscle or strength endurance we don't want to do that we want to ultimately focus on the goal that is at hand if it's a plunge hold we want to focus on getting better at a plunge hold if it's a front lever hold we want to better focus on getting a front lever hold plunge press front lever raise, way to pull up, 
handstand push-up, 90 degree push-up, etc. Okay, so make sure to ultimately choose the program that's going to work best for you based on your intensity level and that you can enjoy and apply to a certain day. How much time you have to train is very, very important as well. But then also doing your testing, ultimately to determining what the weak muscle groups are from there, seeing what muscle groups have actually worked in that specific goal or goals that you have. And then from there, ultimately determining why you want to have those goals in the first place. If it's just for personal reasons or it's for competition reasons, those can be two different, very overarching reasons, both completely justified that will determine where you go next as well. Anyway, again, my name is Jeremy. I'm going to make your calisthenics. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll talk to you next time.